Today's show is going to be nice and simple. We will be ranking the top five winner classic games. And yes, the 2020 winter classic is on this list. Stay tuned to find out where it is on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked on Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team, every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, and you are locked on the Dallas Stars on this Thursday, December 30th, almost to the new year. And you know what New Year's Day means, folks, for the world of hockey. That means the Winter Classic, as has been the case since 2008 when the Winter Classic began, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Buffalo Sabres going at it. Uh, and today we're I'll be ranking uh, the top five Winter Classic games, in my opinion. Uh, just wanted to have a little bit of fun. I feel like some of the themes uh, of this show and even just hockey in general have been somewhat negative. Um, as I'm recording this a few hours ago, it was announced that the world juniors are now canceled. More Dallas stars, players and team personnel have been placed in COVID protocol. Jamie, Ben, Ryan Suter, Luke, Glenn Denning. It came out uh, on Wednesday. And so wanted to lighten the mood a little bit, talk about some exciting things, reminisce on some good hockey memories. Cause uh, there's not too much else to report in the in words of COVID that you guys probably don't already know or that hasn't already been said or uh, could be talked about at length for a full episode. Uh, pretty much hit all the notes as far as everything concerns for the stars. But let's leave that behind us and let's get right down to talking about the Winter Classic and the best five games. Before we hop into that, though, do want to take a quick moment and say thank you for stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars. Whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, Thank you for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe and follow the Locked on Stars podcast wherever you get your podcast at, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. It is absolutely free to subscribe to the show. So please, I encourage you to do that if you do not do so already. But without any further hesitation, before I give you the fifth ranked uh, game on my list, and we want to give you the qualifications that I am judging this on again. Uh, I say this a lot for a lot of things about the show, but this is my personal opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion of what games they think are the greatest or what uniforms. Uh, but this is my list based on some of my criteria. If you have a different opinion, or even if you agree, feel free to let me know either in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter as well at Dane double underscore. Lewis, but here are my qualifications for what makes a great winter classic game the location, the uniforms, and the game itself. That's what I went through when judging this. It was a pretty tough list to narrow because there has been a lot of good games over the years, a few duds in there. I mean, as is the case when you've been doing this for over 10 years, uh, a few games had to be postponed and rescheduled, like this year's winter classic that we'll be seeing in Minnesota on New Year's Day between the Wild and the Blues was supposed to be played in 2021, but due to COVID got rescheduled and now it's being played just in a couple of days, which is very, very exciting. Uh, And I can't wait to watch that game unfold and can't wait to see the Minnesota wild back in action uh, because it's been a hot minute since they've played just like it's been a hot minute since we've seen the stars take the ice. But number five on the list of my favorite winter classic games of all time coming in at number five, the 2015 winter classic in Washington, DC. This game uh, had a little bit of everything in it. Uh, the Washington Capitals beat the Chicago Blackhawks 3-2 to two with a goal in the final 30 seconds courtesy of Troy Brower. Uh, if you don't remember that game, the game coming down to the wire, looking like it was going to go to overtime. Uh, then Troy Brower um, comes in and saves the day. I believe that Washington was on the power play when that happened uh, in kind of a weird sequence where a player lost their stick and players kind of froze because they thought play might get stopped. Um, for a potential penalty, but the referees allowed play to keep going, and Troy Brower took full advantage and put the puck in the back of the net. Uh, current Dallas star Braden Holtby was in net for the Washington Capitals uh, back when he you know, was kind of in his prime uh, and becoming one of the better goalies in the NHL. Um, you know, only a year out from winning the Vesna Trophy was Braden Holtby at that time, uh, an absolute dominant 
dominant goalie at that time in the National Hockey League was Braden Holtzby. He gets the win for the Capitals in this game. Alex Ovechkin cemented his legacy in the Winter Classic lore by getting a goal. Um, you know, and Chicago, uh, to no you know fault of their own, if you will, did come back in this game. They were down two to zero, and they made things interesting. Uh, you know, getting that two to two tie. Unfortunately, surrendering that game-winning goal in the final you know few seconds of the game, and then unable to bounce back despite a few good looks uh, in the closing seconds of the game. And then, of course, uh, I did mention that uniforms were factored into this. The Chicago uniforms, they were okay. They looked pretty close, if not exactly similar to Chicago's away uniforms. But I really did enjoy the uniforms from Washington in this game. Uh, the red and the blue, always a classic look. Uh, I think that as corny as it sounds, as the kids say, Washington understood the assignment of, you know, a huge game playing in their city in Washington, uh, the capital of the United States, a.k.a. why they're called the Washington Capitals, uh, and just doing a nice red and blue jersey with the white stars on there. Just a really good look. I think it's aged really well. And I think, you know, still one of the best jerseys that we've seen across the Winter Classic, but probably not the best. We'll get to the best in a little bit. But coming in at number four on our list of best Winter Classic games of all time is the 2010 Winter Classic in Boston. Uh, in this game, the Boston Bruins edge out the Philadelphia Flyers in overtime two to one. Uh, I think one of the biggest reasons why this is so high on my list is Fenway Park. Uh, I feel like I could just leave it at that. Enough said. Uh, I know I'm a huge baseball guy. I'm sure many of you are as well. Um, and even if you're not, I, I, you have to at least know that Fenway Park is one of, if not the most historic sports venue, not just in the United States, but in the entire world. I mean, it has truly stood the test of time. Uh, I've only been there one time whenever I was in Boston, got to catch a Red Sox game a few years ago, got to take a tour of the stadium. Uh, just absolutely astounding. Uh, definitely not the biggest stadium, not the flashiest in terms of technology. Or, or aesthetics or look, uh, but just a classic all-time sporting venue. So really cool to see, you know, a baseball stadium with so much historic value host a hockey game, uh, you know, outside. Not probably one of the smaller crowds, if not the smallest crowd in Winter Classic history, but still that place was packed to the brim with fans. The atmosphere was electric. I mean, just listening on TV, I, I mean, it sounded like, that hundreds of thousands of people it sounded like the 2014 winter classic that was played in Ann Arbor. Uh, just truly insane. Boston sports fans always coming out in full force. Uh, so that's just one reason I, I said I could just leave it at that. Um, but of course, we got a pretty good game out of it in the 2010 winter classic. Uh, of course, Mark Recchi ties the game with just above two minutes left on the power play for Boston. Boston unable to get too much going offensively in this game. Philadelphia scoring pretty early on a very defensive game, a, a game that seems like something that Dallas Stars fans would get accustomed to watching. I know I've seen my fair share of defensive games over the past several years watching the Stars, but the you know, the Bruins do get on the board just above two minutes. Thanks to Mark Recchi uh, on the power play, tying the game up. The crowd goes insane. The game goes to overtime. There was an insane sequence in front of the Boston goal, uh, Boston goalie Tim Thomas at the time fighting for his life at the end of regulation, but also in overtime, there's a sequence. If you go back and watch the highlights on the NHL YouTube channel, where Thomas is just flopping like a fish, fighting for his life to keep the puck from going in the net. And again, you can hear the crowd, the oohs and the ahs. I mean, just an insane moment. Uh, Philadelphia fans and Boston fans alike on the edge of their seats uh, in anticipation for what they thought might be the dagger from Philadelphia in overtime. But Tim Thomas said no and, and gives his team a fighting chance. And then, of course, Patrice Bergeron connects with Marco Sturm for the OT game winner just a few moments later. Just an insane moment, a moment fitting for such a historic venue such as Fenway. Uh, truly incredible so much fun to rewatch those highlights. Did not watch that game live as a kid. Very few of these games did I watch live as a kid, uh, as you know, hockey wasn't always my favorite sport growing up. But just going back and getting to review some of this footage and look at some of these games and some of these moments, uh, just absolutely insane and such a thrill to watch, even as a replay over 10 years later. Uh, the 2010 Winter Classic between the Bruins and Flyers going down as an all time classic. No pun intended, or maybe the pun is intended. You be the judge of that. Well, coming up next, we will talk about the number three, two, and one spots on my list of the best top five winter classics of all time. But before we do that, I do want to take a moment and say thank you to one of the sponsors of today's episode, and that is Primal Origin Oils. If you or someone you care about has a beard, it needs to get primal. Maybe you're that guy who has never considered the benefits of treating your beard with product. 
Primal Origin oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and with low impact on our planet. Primal Origin oils makes balms, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel in beard products available. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the United States. We know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils challenges you to compare their ingredients and the feel in beard to the other products you've used. We promise you will see and feel the difference. Remember the code Locked On gets you 20% off at PrimalOriginOils.com. Again, use the code Locked On at checkout for 20% off at PrimalOriginOils.com. Moving on to the next segment of today's episode of Locked on Stars, your first listen of the day. Going to talk about the number three and number two spots on my list for the best, the top five winter classic games of all time. Uh, And and coming in at number three on this list, uh, you knew it was going to be on this list somewhere. Uh, It's the Locked on Stars podcast, the 2020 winter classic. As much as this is probably my favorite winter classic game, uh, definitely probably not the best one of all time across NHL circles, but a truly important one and worthy of being in the top three discussion, if you ask me. And I think number three is a very, very fitting place for this to be. Lots to talk about with this 2020 Winter Classic. Uh, just incredible. First of all, the Dallas Stars get a win in front of 85,000 people at the Cotton Bowl against their rivals, the National Predators. A thrilling 42 win, a comeback for the Dallas Stars, they were down two to zero in this game at one point, and they claw their way back and take a commanding four to two lead that they ride all the way to the end, despite Corey Perry getting thrown out of the game early on and uh, the many other obstacles that the Stars' offense faced early on in the game. They were able to rally together and come back and give the eighty five thousand fans something to cheer about on the way home. Uh, and I think this was just a huge game uh, because this is a huge statement for hockey in the southern part of the United States. You know, hockey was the NHL started up in the north and in the northeast with the original six, those teams being founded up there. Uh, but recently, and not just in 2020, but before in 2020 and even now, we're seeing the emergence of some dominance coming from teams kind of in the southern part of the United States, whether it's the Florida Panthers, the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Dallas Stars, Nashville Predators, St. Louis. Uh, And even, you know, teams like L.A., uh, you know, coming and surfacing themselves at one point or another as some of the better teams in the league. And I think, you know, there was a lot of questions going into this game of, okay, Dallas is hosting the Winter Classic. Where are they going to host it in a big venue? Can they get people to show up to this game? Can the game be played outside because it might not be ice cold in January like it is in places like New York, Chicago, Washington, Boston? Uh, And Dallas was able to prove those people wrong. If you remember, if you listened to some of the shows back in the summer, I had Jeff K on the show, uh, PA announcer for the Dallas Stars inside the American Airlines Center. And he talked about, you know, how important that was. People questioning whether or not people would show up to the Winter Classic uh, and Stars fans and Predators fans, to their credit, showed out in full force, packing that Cotton Bowl uh, and just giving it an incredible atmosphere. Um, showing that you know hockey is growing here in this area of the country uh, and fans are being added every single day, whether it's the Dallas Stars or not. People are growing to love the sport of hockey more and more. Uh, and a game like this just went a long way to establish the presence of hockey and the NHL in general here in Texas, especially. Just an incredible game and probably one of, if not the best uniform matchup. If you're watching on YouTube, you see behind me, I got the, the Dallas Stars Winter Classic jersey up. Uh, who cares? that it doesn't have an A and the people that say, oh, it says STDRs on it, uh, whatever. Who cares? It looks so sick. It matched so well with the brown shorts that they had. Just an absolutely clean look. Nashville had really clean, crispy jerseys as well. Just an aesthetically pleasing uniform matchup. Going down as one of the best Dallas Stars jerseys of all time. That's why I have it behind me. That's why I have one myself. I'm sure many of you listening have your own. Uh, just about any dedicated Stars fans that buys the new jerseys certainly has one, if not more, winter classic jerseys and those beanies that they had with the Texas flag on the back. These things were sick and I regret not buying one because now I can't find one. Uh, and I really wish I could because those beanies are so cool. So sick, but coming in at number two on the list of best top five winter classics of all time is the 2014 winter classic in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, and this game, the Toronto Maple Leafs topped the red wings of Detroit in a shootout. Uh, just an absolute thriller of a game in front of a huge 105,491 sized audience. I mean, one of the, if 
it has to be. I didn't even look this up before. Have no proof to back this up, but I just have to imagine this is the largest crowd at a recorded game in NHL history. I mean, 105,000 people in the big house where the University of Michigan plays their football games. Just absolutely insane that they were able to fill that building up. And have people show up to watch hockey uh, in a setting that truly is uh, one, you know, one of the foregrounds of the NHL, Detroit being one of the original six teams in the league, getting to play that game in Michigan in such a big venue, having people show up and show out for this game. Uh, Another historic venue, you know, the University of Michigan, one of the blue bloods of college football, uh, a historic venue, well-known venue uh, on the same level. Uh, you know, the big house to college football, what some might say Fenway Park is to the MLB, maybe not quite the same, but kind of in that same area, in that same conversation. Uh, just a crazy game. Like I said, the game ending in a shootout, uh, thanks to current St. Louis Blue Tyler Bozak scoring a goal in the third period. And then, of course, the game winner in the shootout. Uh, and also in the same vein as the Dallas Stars, one of the best uniform matchups that we've ever seen in the Winter Classic back in 2014. The red and the blue of Toronto and Detroit just mixed perfectly, looked so good. Uh, just no complaints there. An absolute classic banger of a Winter Classic game. Uh, saying the word classic a lot this episode, but you know they call it the Winter Classic for a reason. Uh, and the games we're talking about today certainly belong in that category. Well, coming up next, we will talk about the number one best Winter Classic game of all time. But before we do that, I do want to take a moment and say thank you to another sponsor of today's episode, and that is betonline.ag. BetOnline has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football continues its march through the college bowl season and to, into the pro football playoffs, BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all of your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. And to close out today's episode of Locked on Stars, where we're reviewing the top five Winter Classic games of all time, Uh, coming in at number one. Maybe you saw this one coming. Maybe this is a surprise. But with number one, got to go with the OG, the 2008 Winter Classic in Buffalo, New York. In this game, the Pittsburgh Penguins beat the Buffalo Sabres two to one in yet another shootout, similar to number two, the 2014 Winter Classic in Ann Arbor. But This game, uh, just super heat banger, for lack of a better term. Absolutely insane game in true Dallas Stars top line fashion. A goal was scored in the first 21 seconds of the game by Pittsburgh. Uh, Buffalo eventually crawls back to tie the game at one. Uh, Just a defensive clash of a game that goes into a shootout where Sidney Crosby, of course, just fittingly storybook, could not script this better. Uh, One of the faces of the league back then, continuing to be one of the faces of the league today. Uh, historic one of the best players of all time Sidney Crosby scores the game winner in the shootout an electric atmosphere an intense game I mean what else could you ask for in the inaugural winter classic I mean it truly set the standard for the future you know people doubted the 2020 winter classic just because of the location geographically where it was being played the teams the fan bases maybe Uh, but you know I feel like that wasn't too much of a question Uh, You know, playing in Buffalo where the Bills play football, uh, forgetting the name of the stadium off the top of my head. Uh, Yeah, I'm not even going to try to remember because I know I'm going to get it wrong. But where the Bills play football, a smaller stadium than the Cotton Bowl, not as concerning to fit fans of those teams. Uh, Buffalo and Pittsburgh, both pretty close to that stadium. But I think it was just a concern of general of how they were going to get the ice outside, sustaining it, selling tickets, getting people to show up in the freezing cold. Uh, and the fans showed up and showed out again, and the team showed up and showed out and bought into the moment and gave the fans a truly incredible game, and it, and it just set the tone for the future, even if not every single game has been an instant classic or a super tightly contested game. Uh, always super cool to see the game of hockey be presented in such a unique way, uh, outside, in the elements, often in the cold, uh, truly, as some would argue, as it's meant to be played, uh, and you know, gives fans a unique opportunity to watch the game, even just the pregame stuff, 
uh, you know, the spectacle of it all is truly unlike really anything else that we see in sports. Uh, you know, we have several other sports that are played outside like football and baseball, but you know, that, and even the NBA, they, they don't really have anything quite like the winter classic, uh, truly incredible. And I hope it's a tradition that we continue to see throughout the years and that it never stops. Uh, despite pandemics, lockouts, whatever it might have. I, I hope that the Winter Classic always continues to show its face every single year, every day on New Year's, because it is absolutely a treat to watch, and I can't wait for the 2022 Winter Classic. Even though it's two division rivals that the Dallas Stars are not truly fond of, uh, always exciting to watch a game of hockey played outside in a venue that normally isn't suited for hockey and always interesting to see how it unfolds. And can't wait for this year's in a couple of days. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making Locked on Stars your first listen of the day. Now go make your second listen of the day, the Locked on Bets podcast, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. The Locked on Bets podcast can be found for free wherever you get your podcast app. Be sure to also subscribe and follow the Locked on Stars podcast wherever you find your podcast, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. It's absolutely free and helps me and the network out a ton. Be sure to also leave a review on your favorite podcasting platform if you like what you hear. Be sure to tune in to tomorrow's episode of Locked on Stars as we will do a year in review for the Dallas Stars organization, dating all the way back to the start of last season and even some of this season talking about some of the best moments for the Dallas Stars in the year 2021 as we look ahead to hopefully brighter days in 2022. But I hope you have a great day, Stars fans, and we will see you back here tomorrow.